Hey everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here, just kicking off the year of 2023 with our new video. Um, having some issues with my camera here in the beginning of the uh, year for the first video, so I apologize for that. But um, sharing my screen here and just talking about just some things we saw uh, out there. And one thing I wanted to point out uh, quickly, it's been, first of all, a, a very volatile month, uh, no doubt. Uh, the year end uh, had its share of volatile days, both up and down, and that's what bear market rallies and and even uh, sort of turning points look like, right? But um, the problem is, is we don't really know exactly where this turning point is. Now, this is just uh, a pretty big adjustment in the last couple of days. We, we just saw um, yeah, a lot of shorts cover some of their positions. We saw uh, the changes in the dynamics of, of the options market, um, you know, where puts potentially were being sold uh, market participants that were hedged uh, to the downside were covering shorts as well. Those are your dealers who are taking the other side of those trades. And you you get sort of a recalibration. And that's a little bit of what we're seeing here. Then don't forget, I mean, momentum can beget momentum. And when you start to see that, you start to see new traders, investors coming in um, to the current market environment. But one thing that kind of caught my eye today is I'm going to point your attention here. This is on CNBC. You can go there and just take it, take a look at it. Um, economist uh, Campbell Harvey. Now he's a, a really professor at the business um, school uh, in uh, at, at Duke University. And he's really tasked uh, or, or credited, I should say, um, with being able to forecast recessions uh, since 1968. And that's the yield curve indicator that he created. And that's that inverted curve we, everyone's talking about. Just Google it. If you don't know what it is, you'll find a billion hits on it probably. And he did a thesis back in 1986 and, and, and showed really that the yield curve, that's the 10-year treasury yields minus the three-month uh, three bill, the treasury bill yields, predicts economic growth, right? On the flip side, he was looking at, uh, obviously, the, the inverted yield curve between the twos and the tens. And that really has done extremely well. It's been eight for eight in forecasting recessions since 1968 with, in his words, no false alarms. What he's seeing now is that he might be questioning his model, uh, potentially for the first time based on this video here that you can go watch. And he feels that as if it is too simplified under the current conditions. Now, that doesn't mean, I don't know if he's ever thought that before. He was asked that direct question, but really didn't say anything about it. But I just thought that was really interesting um, for an individual who created a model uh, many, many years ago, who's been right 100% of the time as far as predicting recessions, um, that he just said the yield curve now impacts behavior. And uh, he thinks that the inverted yield curve um, obviously is all over the news and is he is more cautious than he is confident at this point in that indicator, which that really means is that he thinks we might be seeing a soft landing if the Fed kind of pulls back and doesn't overshoot, which, which a lot of people are saying. Now, the reverse of that is the Fed could probably overshoot and fix um, a recession pretty easily because it really just takes to unwind any uh, rate hikes that were put out there to begin with. So, that's just something I, I just wanted to share. We're going to go over um, some of the sectors here today, uh, as we typically do, and then look at a few names uh, on our system as well. So we're going to start with discretionary here, just doing these in order, um, the way they're kind of set up here in uh, in stock charts. This is the ACP platform that you guys uh, hopefully are using. It's an excellent platform. There's been some new changes, uh, much easier to update some of the indicators as well. So. Um, looking at this discretionary look, obviously it's trying to find a bottom here, but uh, it really is is still struggling. It's up big today, up two percent move on the index or, or the sector itself, right? That sector fund XLY, and really doing better than the S and P in the last couple of days, no doubt. I mean, there's you know names like Tesla and Amazon, things like that in there. So just pay attention to this. There's nothing changing trend here at all. Um, it's just really uh, sort of an oversold rally. And the reverse, uh, look at look at healthcare doing the opposite, right? People selling the defensives, buying the growth areas of the market. But really, has there been a trend change in this sector? Nope, still on the upside. XLU, same exact thing. Um, still sort of a, a, a downward trend, but trending higher recently. But I'd call this more of a choppy, 
setup where it just depends on uh, the flavor of the week. If, if risk is elevated, you start to see utilities rally. If risk is not elevated, they start to sell off. And that's kind of what you're seeing here. A little bit of push and pull, although it is up 1% today. It's pretty in, in an interesting spot. Uh, real estate, same exact thing. Still in a downtrend, trying to find some ground um, where it can get a little bit of traction on the upside. Uh, looking at staples now, look, staples have been on a tear, right? Since really the entire year, when you compare it to the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, when you look at it individually, it's been choppy, but it's been defensive, right? It acted um, as expected, although has been in a downtrend uh, for the last 30 days or so, it is bucking that trend in the last few days. So you're seeing staples increase a little bit, and maybe the fear of recession is pulling back a little bit. But again, let's just put that in perspective. Recessions aren't depressions. Um, and I think they can be easily fixed. But you know, again, the dynamics can change overnight, as we can as we've seen so far this year, XLK uh, tech is still in in a downtrend, nothing changing here. Uh, XLI, that's your industrials, um, still in an uptrend like it. Financials, sitting in a sort of cautious uptrend, right? I mean, it, it definitely changed trend, but it's really not breaking out and getting any new highs here. If I look at the, you know, the crosshairs, we're looking at around 36 and change uh, for that to happen, right? I mean, if it can't get above that, um, it's probably going to continue the downtrend. But again, don't know. Uh, financials look pretty interesting, but I'm cautious on them. Energy still in an uptrend, nothing changed there. And here's communications, XLC. Now that is interesting pattern here. I don't want to get fooled by this. It's happened before where you saw a bunch of lower, I'm sorry, higher lows uh, forming into that uh, August high, right? And that took about two months or so to happen, only to fail. Look at the big picture. We're still not seeing these moving averages get any closer than they've been. They have recently done that, and it did that here as well. But um, it's less of an area now to get up to that 200-day moving average. But I'm still looking at the trend versus the SPY. It is decidedly down. So I wouldn't be um, fooled yet <laughs> by that. And when I say fooled yet, I mean I'm just not convinced um, that it's there yet. But again, looking at uh, materials, uh, different situation here. Again, sideways action on the ETF, but you start to look at what's happening um, in the ratio, when you compare it to SPY, it's been, you know, pretty strong since the end of November, all the way through uh, the beginning here of the of this year. Hasn't put in a new high on the ratio, but certainly when it gets to these levels, it seems to have trouble. So um, let's take that for what it's worth, you know, at this particular point. Okay, I just wanted to go over a few names uh, that have changed um, rating this week, and uh, one of them is Ascent E S N T. You can see here I've got the rating pulled up, the Chaken Power Gauge rating, which is available on the ACP platform for purchase. Pretty inexpensive, um, something that you should definitely take advantage of. You can find it here through the plugins and find more information down there. Um, but looking at e ESNT, uh, we've got a very bullish rating on the name, but you know the trend is still kind of in a downward momentum. Now, don't forget, our rating is fundamental. And so when we start to upgrade, we're a slightly sometimes ahead, okay, sometimes ahead of the technicals. In this case, you might consider that um, that situation where we're seeing it sort of ahead um, sort of of, of these particular um, technical setups, but might be heading in the right direction. But again, something that I'm just pointing out that we had a change in uh, rating, not so much a change in trend, so to speak. Uh, one that did have a change in rating and in trend uh, was CSMT. Sorry, CSTM. Let me redo that. One that did have a rating change and a trend change was CSTM, which is uh, a const uh, Constellium, a metals and mining company. But again, the 50 day is kind of behind, but that rage move higher, right? I mean, you got money flow is increasing. And look at our fundamental setup here as well. So you have a strong stock and a strong group that on our system, the way I look at our relative strength, has just, it's an early trend change. And something just to, to look at, um, obviously it is a smaller cap name. So there's some risk in, and volatility potentially in this name as well. But again, these are just names that just change trend, but look at the rating 
you know, on this particular name. Um, you've got big names changing uh, ratings as well. Uh, ones that are, you know, that have been kind of back and forth and had some big moves. One of them is Nike, N-K-E, which if you're paying attention, obviously you're starting to see um, some changes in trend in general, but this one's really, really close. And on our system, when I'm looking at our shaken charts, you can see basically that this change trends somewhere around mm, the end of November or so. So you started to see a trend change in here and then it fell back. Obviously that was an earnings report and then popped on earnings and then continued higher. So there's multiple patterns building in here, but really the one that pay, you, know, you wanna pay attention to is this crossover. Um, look what happened last time across down. Look where it is now. Is it is it very predictive? Sometimes it can be. All right. Sometimes it can be. Sometimes it stalls on that. But my point being is is that you've got a bullish rated stock and something that's trend uh, trending higher uh, pretty aggressively. Um, so that's just the name I thought I'd I'd just point out. Um, some other ones that you might know. Some smaller cap names, um, mid cap uh, sort of capital market type company. Uh, Stiefel Financial uh, Corp is you know, one, a broker dealer, asset manager, and or uh, you know financial advisory firm here um, you know in, in the United States. And interesting, um, interesting setup. It's been sort of been a battle between neutral and uh, neutral plus and bullish. And this week it's back to bullish. But you've got some interesting fundamentals. Uh, stock up nicely today. And look what happened. Even though that moving average made a cross, this is a daily chart. Uh, sometimes it doesn't automatically mean a buy signal, but in this case, it's kind of fighting that you know downward move that it's had here since mid-November um, and bucking the trend a little bit. So a lot of names in this group are starting to look a little better, but nothing um, uh, that is obviously for certain or guaranteed. We just don't know. You just got to follow these trends just to make sure of kind of what's happening. Um, one in, in, in the that's sort of in the semiconductor area but really focuses on uh, renewable energy is Canadian Solar CSIQ is also a name that has been battling it um, in the rating between neutral plus and bullish and actually wound up bullish again this week but again very close to changing that momentum money flow has been negative though but just recently turned positive so again very mixed bag you've got a lot of variables push and pull on the market and, you know, you've got an economist out, out there in the world that has said, you know, here's a, here's a model that's worked 100% of the time since uh, the late 60s, and now he's questioning it. So can you ask for any more confusing factors out there? Probably not. Let's just look at the S&P trend before we end today's video. Okay, in the last minute or so, I just want to kind of go over what's happening here in the S&P. Um, we've been tracking this now for uh, a year and a half or so this particular chart, just trying to find what the rallies look like on a weekly basis, but also comparing it to the bullish percent, um, looking at the S&P down the bottom here. And it's really not above that sort of trend line. And sometimes it does. And when it does get above that, it seems to peak in those rallies every single time, right? Is this the beginning of rally five? It certainly looks like it. Uh, I can't make that predict prediction, obviously. It's more of a projection. But look at the rallies, one, two, three, and four have all kind of happened. And you're getting in this wedge setup where uh, 4,000 looks to definitely be resistance once again. And obviously, the next resistance level would be this new trend line that's forming on the upside, which would be about 4,200 if it continues. Now, the issue is, is if it doesn't, it could fall further. And that's what I think a lot of people are expecting. And that's a lot of more economic data um, than, than fundamental data. And obviously, economics can affect fundamentals. And I think that's what people are kind of waiting on to see if the S&P gets a downgrade from an earnings perspective. Well, once again, thanks for tuning in. Apologize for the lack of video, but um, hopefully the content was worth tuning into. We'll be back next week. Take care. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.